Hey everyone! Last time I showed you how to use a fancy tech called Laura with the A Detailer extension to swap faces and look super similar to Scarlett Johansson. It was cool, but wow, does it take a lot of effort. Today I've got something different for you. We're going to swap faces without touching Laura and still nail a pretty impressive look-alike effect. Check out these pictures where I've used this new method. They're not quite Scarlet level with Laura, but it's still pretty awesome. You might have heard about IP adapter and instant ID in control net for face swapping. They're okay, but sometimes the similarity is just meh. The trick I'm showing you mixes the best of both worlds, giving us a face swap that's way closer to the real deal. If you're still into making your own Lara model, my last video's got you covered. I'll drop the link in the description. This time, we're diving into an upgraded tool called Web UI 4G. I'll make sure to drop the GitHub page link in the description so you can snag all the install details without breaking a suite. Now, what's the big deal about Web UI 4G? First off, it's like Web UI went to the gym and got supercharged. We're talking about a performance boost that leaves even comfy UI in the dust. And if you thought the original had cool features, Forge is here to blow your mind with even more goodies to play with. Stay tuned and let's get into how this can amp up your projects. All right, let's dive into some cool updates. Control Net's got this fresh version of IP adapter, and the game has totally changed with the preprocessor. It's not what it used to be. And here's the kicker Instant ID's preprocessor has also gotten a makeover. It's different from the old web UI setup, and trust me, that's a game changer. That's exactly why we're all about Web UI Forge now. I gave it a spin. Mixing IP adapter and Instant ID in the classic web UI and let's just say it was a no-go, not effective at all. Once we've got Web UI Forge up and running, the interface welcomes us. The first thing we're gonna do is pick a base model. Now we're locked into SDXL here, because that's what Instant ID is all about these days. Next stop, the image to image section. Here's where the magic starts. Click on InPaint, time to upload the photo you're aiming to tweak. Now grab that brush and let's paint over the face area. This isn't just any doodling. You want to cover a bit more than the face itself. Why? Because we're going for a total makeover, changing the face shape and all. Once you've got that masterpiece painted, scroll on down to continue the transformation. All right, let's tweak the mask blur a notch higher. This little adjustment is our secret weapon against those pesky visible seams that might pop up after the swap. Now, don't forget to tick the Soften Painting option. This is a shiny new feature in Web UI Forge that the original didn't have. It's like a magic eraser for rough edges, making sure everything blends smoothly after the repaint. Next up, we're going to describe the face area in the prompt. Choosing the right sampling method is key here. Some methods might give you a face swap that looks a bit off. If that happens, no stress, just switch it up until you find the perfect fit. See that triangle ruler icon? Click it to snap the width and height back to the original dimensions. This keeps our new face looking like it truly belongs there. And about the denoising strength, let's dial it down slightly. Too much. And our swapped face might end up looking too polished, almost out of place. You'll want to tweak this based on your result images to hit that sweet spot of looking natural. Moving on to setting up Control Net, let's dive into the Control Net integrated section and fire up the first Control Net. Once you're in, IP adapter is the way to go. And the great news is, the pre processor and model we need are already picked out for us. Easy, right? If you're missing this model, don't sweat it. I've covered all about IP adapter in a previous video. I'll drop that link in the description for you. Now, here's a crucial step. Ticking the Upload Independent Control Image box. Time to upload a headshot of Scarlett Johansson. But hey, not just any headshot will do. The IP adapter can be a bit picky. And sometimes, if the headshot isn't just right, the face swap might not work as expected. It's not always about choosing a photo with the perfect lighting and clarity. Some headshots work wonders, while others, not so much. The headshot you choose really makes or breaks the deal, so choose wisely to get the best outcome. Next up, let's scroll down a bit and tweak the control weight slightly lower. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all number here. 
It's all about feeling it out to get just the right balance for your project. And oh, we can't forget to sprinkle a little Laura magic into our prompt. This bit partners up with the first IP adapter we set up. You might want to dial down the weight a touch here too, but just a heads up, adjusting the Laura's weight is more about fine tuning. It's not going to dramatically change the overall face swapping show. All right, it's time to bring in the cavalry with the second and third control net setups, focusing on instant ID. This part's a bit like a mini adventure because we need to download some extra models. Don't worry, I've got all the details and download links ready for you on this GitHub page. Here's what you do. Click on those links to get the downloads rolling. Once you've got them, we're going to do a bit of renaming. The first model gets a new tag as IP Adapter Instant ID SDXL, and the second one will be known as Control Instant ID SDXL from here on out. Next, it's time to gather our little digital ducks in a row. Pop those rename models into the Control Net folder, which you'll find under the Models folder in the Automatic 11 11's root directory. With everything in its right place, Instant ID is all set and ready to rock. Now, let's jump back into the Web UI Forge interface and keep this show on the road. Let's dive deeper and switch on the second Control Net. Make sure you hit Enable, and then for the control type, you're going to want to pick Instant ID. When we talk about the preprocessor, go ahead and select Instant ID Face Key Points. This nifty tool is all about recognizing the face's five key points, making sure we get everything just right. As for the model, Control Instant ID SDXL is your go to. No need to fiddle with the control weight for this part, it's all set. Now on to setting up the third control net. This time we're selecting Insight Face Instant ID for the preprocessor and IP Adapter Instant ID SDXL for the model. Here's where it gets interesting. Upload another headshot of Scarlett Johansson, but switch it up with a different one. Mixing IP adapter and instant ID lets us use two different shots for a spot on result. As for the control weight, remember there's no one rule fits all here. Tweak it based on how the test run looks. This is where your creative eye comes into play. We use two different headshots of Scarlet for a more accurate swap. How cool is that? Adjusting the control weight here depends on how the test run looks. All right, we've got all our settings dialed in. It's time to hit the ground running and see our face swapping magic unfold. Brace yourselves. This is going to take a minute since we're juggling three control nets. Why don't we take a quick peek at the terminal? We're on the lookout for any hiccup that might pop up. Once we've given the terminal the all clear, let's head back to Web UI Forge. And voila. Our creation is alive. The resemblance is great, though we've got a bit of a shadow situation on the forehead. No worries though, we'll just pull that result image into InPaint for a quick touch up. A slight adjustment on the denoising strength, run it again, and perfection. If anything looks off with the image, like the first round's forehead shadow, remember, tweaking the control weight or denoising strength is your best friend. Sometimes it takes a few tries to nail it, just like we did, and there we have it. I hope you found this guide super helpful. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, drop your thoughts below, and smash that follow button for more awesome content. Catch you in the next video!